Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Space Basement uh, 2020 uh, YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I have with me here Greg Kusiak, uh, who is a member of the St. Catharines scene from the original collectives uh, and um, basically a high school friend of a bunch of the folks that went on to form the jam that I've been a part of. Uh, Greg, thanks for doing this. Hey, my pleasure. So, um, yeah, let, if you could just tell me uh, how your involvement uh, with uh, Billy's Masonic Tavern and uh, the phase of it that uh, coexisted at Speechless and to Bond Street. Uh. All right. Well, um, I don't exactly recall how I got uh, involved uh, other than through my old friends from high school, uh, John and uh, Chandra and Phil. Uh, I guess they were jamming at, in Billy Mason's basement and various and sundry other places that were <laughs> for, for, for a variety of reasons were uh, uh, you know constantly changing uh, venues locations uh, I guess people were getting sick and tired of having jam bands <laughs> and musicians in various states of intoxication in their garages basements uh, apartments <laughs> um, yep. uh, over the course of time so it was it was pretty uh, uh organic let's let's call it organic uh, as the people were moving people were coming and going people were getting kicked out music was happening that's that's basically what it gets down to people were using people were getting together for a creative outlet from uh uh as a as a uh diversion from their regular day-to-day -day lives um, and it, wherever it happened, it happened until it sort of got formalized at uh, the space at uh, Two Bond Street underneath the Niagara Artist Center. Mm -hmm. I gather it's a it's a bike shop now. Uh, yeah, but, I think it's uh, Liberty Bicycles' newest location. Yeah. Yeah, they've they at the time somebody had been put some time and money into turning that space on the on the street level main floor uh, into a black box theater space, uh, but. It, Somehow it went poof. Uh, it just never failed, to, or it failed to uh, materialize into what they had hoped it would be for whatever reason. Um, so, uh, NAC, Niagara Artist Center, was looking for some people to get in there so they could uh, generate some income and uh, uh, um, uh, offset their rent expense, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so, after being kicked out of as I said, lo losing the losing the spaces or the places that they could that people could jam at, they yep. uh, we 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 forged a six month short term agreement with the people at NAC to um, have it there, and we expanded it basically from from a one night a week kind of thing into you know whoever wants to come in and do a jam or a band rehearsal if they've got something a little more formalized uh, together and looking for you know work you know paid work uh, mm -hmm. as a band uh, they could come in and rehearse they could come in and shoot videos they could do whatever and, and i mean to, we were lucky enough to have contacts in the musical scene and people people you know basically stumbled in with when the doors were open because it was you know late spring early summer that we took over yep. and, uh, and people you know sort of stumbled in off the street you, you know hey we heard some music what's going on here um, and it grew that way. Um, and then we got hooked up with people, local promoters, who mm -hmm. decided, hey, we can have a show here on Friday and Saturday night. Let's charge $2 or $5 or whatever and put a band or three bands on those stages. Um, and and on, on the stage, hey, there's lights, there's sound, there's a guy who knows how to run them. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, and, and and that's how it took off. So I mean, it got to be a really cool kind of vibe in there that I I, I miss a lot to tell you yeah. the God's honest truth. Uh, and I, I like to go back in my memory banks to those days when it was you know come and hang out starting in the mid to late afternoon depending on work schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, either put some tunes on and just hang out in the dark and clean up from the debauchery the night before, if there was right. any, um, and uh, see what's going to happen that day, unless yeah. there was something on the calendar that was actually happening. Uh, we had, uh, you know, the BMT crew basically had their one night a week set aside for, yeah. this is the night that we can all get together and jam. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, so that happened, and that you know, whoever came came. You know, Billy Mason on his horn or his guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people brought keyboards. People brought amps. I basically set up a microphone or three just for people to vocalize into if they felt moved yep. to. Uh, kind of tough to sing lyrics or, or uh, you know, have a have a you know traditional musical form of a song. Right. Um, yeah. I, I always when, say we, when, when, it was always, and I talked about it in this others. It was always more of a, a radio show or a you know a, a variety show. There was music being made, but not necessarily songs. Songs weren't right. necessarily happening. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, my new. It, it's kind of like skiffle, like the UK tradition of skiffle. I think is where it kind of close closely mirrors. Well, there were there were some recurring themes that would come up, or you know, somebody would start in on something that they had introduced at some point, and we're trying to flesh it out with other right. people. And hey, hey, let's see what's going to happen. Um, now, they, a lot of the time, I don't I, I don't recall a lot of the time recording those things, but I gather that they were. I think there are some archives. John yeah. might have them, or Chandra might. Yeah, have I, them, think, or Rob I think I think John and John has a few that he uploaded to archive.org. And from what I understand, he had plugged into your board essentially a, a couple of times with your permission. Probably one of your out ox outs or something. Well, into really, a tape what, deck or something. Don't tell anybody, but it wasn't my board. It was uh, Billy Mason's board that he brought in. It was Billy Mason's <laughs> PA. There. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So, so I, I was basically I was just basically operating and learning how to wrangle musicians at that point because I was right. still pretty fresh out of school. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I mean, at, at the same time, I was trying to make inroads into the uh, into the uh, Toronto recording and uh, and performing right. uh, circuits you know because they you know you can you can do studio stuff during the day but you can also do live stuff at night right. and a lot a lot of people do that um, because you know it's 6 hours here and 4 hours there um, in in terms of the daytime stuff most of the time but right. the nighttime you go from you know there's a show and the show happens at like nine or ten o'clock at night until one or two o'clock in the morning, and then somehow you got to figure out how to get yourself up in the morning and go and do that. Now, yeah. I was lucky to be in a position. To, I, I, I had a very kind friend um, uh, from the area. He's, he hasn't lived here in forever, but uh, he had gone a, a ahead of me in, to Toronto while I was still in school, and we were mm -hmm. acquainted through mutual friends here. Um, uh, he went on and had, you know, he's he's currently the front of house and uh, audio engineer and uh, road manager for Avril Levine. Okay. Um, yep. Uh, and uh, you know, he's done he's done that for uh, Cage the Elephant and Simple Plan and Roger Hodgson, a Super Tramp, and oh god, so many people. He's he's had a much more August career than I've uh, than I'll ever accomplished in the, in the uh, performing mm -hmm. uh, in, in the in, in the live sound. Uh, 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 industry genre, yeah. uh, uh, but um, it, it's you know I've, he, he was kind enough to open the door for me at one of the places he got started out, uh, which is the Opera House at Queen and Broadview, right. in, in, in on the east end of Toronto, on the east side of Toronto, um, and I was doing monitors there for whoever they hired me for. Sometimes yeah, and, and that actually, that you, you, you were talking about this um, uh, the other day when we, when we chatted. Um, I know that during that six-month period, um, like Steve Stumble, Screen Black Cadillacs, um, Alexis on Fire were using it as a practice space and, as a, uh, and, and uh, also as a, uh, a place to have venues during that period. Um, I, I, was, I was emceeing for Writing on the Wall uh, that Amy and Eileen were doing where we just had a, a poetry slam. Um, uh, tell me about that experience you had with uh, Alexis on Fire. I thought that was really cool. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is just after they had gotten their deal. Uh, they had been signed to whatever record label and, and uh, uh, Joel Carrier was still running Dine Alone Records uh, mm -hmm. on his on his own, I believe. This still is still out of his house in on Beach Street or something, wasn't it? Beach, uh, St. Uh, Catharines or something. Uh, I think one of the spots that he was doing it out of was down by uh, Sir Winston. Oh, okay. PM on 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 uh, Adele, Adeline, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and 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 John, that's where we actually had the meeting with uh, Steve from the Knack to take over the space. Nice. Um, 
I think John and Rob were living there, or maybe Rob was, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Details are fuzzy <laughs> after all these years. Um, uh, but yeah, it, uh, it, it evolved there. And okay, so somehow Joel decided uh, that he was going to do a little bit of a local thing for people who weren't of age to drive up to Toronto or get into the Opera House. Mm -hmm. um, so there we were, two Bond Street, Alexis on fire. I had no idea who these kids were. Yeah, I don't Not. think any of us knew that they were going to blow up as much as they did. I mean, well, saw them pretty regularly at the Mind Bomb, but it was, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, so I mean, part of the rules... That, that we were under with uh, with knack and that we chose to impose upon ourselves were no booze. If you're going to drink, you mm -hmm. bring it. You bring it yourself, and you don't bring it in the building. If, if you're drinking, you're drinking underage out on the sidewalk. Um, somehow there was always beer in the place. I don't know how, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Joel booked the room for a Friday, or I think it was a Friday night. Maybe it was a Thursday night. I can't remember what day of the week it was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he booked the room for a, a little local show as a thank you to the local fan base uh, uh, and whoever, you know, the kids who couldn't come up to Toronto on the night that they were doing their actual showcase for everybody in the industry at the Opera House. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, they had all these brand spanking new amplifiers and drums, and, you know, shiny new and smelled like Long and McQuaid. And <laughs> <laughs> they come in and they did their show. And I, I can't remember if they were openers or not. They probably were. But I don't want to say things got out of hand, but it was a little bit more exuberant than uh, what normally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Than, than, what, that, than what had happened there. Now, unbeknownst to them, um, I was supposed to see them the very next night. <laughs> on stage as their monitor engineer at the opera house so they they blow in and have a grand old time to, to speechless with all of their friends um, and realize that maybe they were taking things a little bit too far um, but oh, okay well we're, we're never coming back here again we've hit the big time <laughs> <laughs> so Normally, when as a freelance engineer, when you're hired by a venue like the Phoenix or the Opera House, you're called in a little bit before uh, bands, performers arrive, just to go through things and set things up based on whatever stage plots or, or whatever you're, you're provided before the gig, you know, test and check before right. the actual real work happens. Um, so they had beaten me to the opera house that day and were already set up on stage and were getting to the point that they wanted to run monitor checks. <laughs> At which point I walked in and pulled the cover off the monitor console. They <laughs> turned their heads and they looked at me and their eyes got big and their jaws dropped and all of a sudden they got very, very quiet and nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just because of me. I mean, they should have been more nervous about the record company, than sure. the media and industry people that were coming. But there I was pulling the cover off the console and firing up the amplifiers and going, hey, guys, how's it going today? <laughs> and, you know, just their eyes the size of saucers <laughs> and their mouths hanging open going, oh, my God, we just saw this guy last night and we might have trashed his room. I can't remember. We were drinking. <laughs> they were yeah. very polite. They were very tense. They were very nervous. Uh, yeah. They pulled the show off. Everybody was very professional, and to a man, you know, they came over and shook my hand at the end of the show nice. and apologized and all that kind of stuff. And you know, Joel was like, "Dude, <laughs> dude, this is a good lesson for my band to learn." I'm like, "Yeah, you, who you <laughs> see on the way up is who you see on the way down, and you never know where they're going to pop up in your career on yeah. this crazy path." So, yep. I mean, that was that was you know one little little nice thing, funny story I've got about the local scene moving onwards and upwards. Uh, in terms of the music industry, what what sort of spawned from the local St. Catherine band scene? And, and I think it is a lesson learned because I've heard over the years I've heard very good stories about the guys in in, in Alexis and and oh, yeah. you know of course Dallas's other project uh, City and Color. I mean, still to a man, very approachable in the streets in St. Kitts when you run into them and oh, yeah. else, right? I mean, yeah. good people. Um, not to mention, like, George is like a fireman. I think that's just freaking cool. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> he's also doing that. Oh, yeah, I still got a day job. <laughs> it's like, what a guy. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah, they're, they're all good folks. And, I, I mean, somebody, I mean, maybe they realized early on that they were going to have their, you know, week five or ten year ride like everybody does. And then what next? Yeah. 
Yeah, and um, with Dine Alone as well. I mean, I think they've got an office in Nashville now. I mean, I'm I'm just so so proud of the guys. I mean, it's oh, pretty cool. They, they've got they've got a huge label. Like I mm -hmm. I, uh, I I was back when I was still on Facebook. I was following Joel and and the record and you know Dine Alone yep. on there. And you know they, some of the people that they were signing, like Lumineers, mm -hmm. uh, Billy Billy Bragg, I think is one of theirs. Yeah. Yep. Um, like huge names. I'm like, holy cow! From you know, the Mighty Oaks for small acorns. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that acorn is Niagara, Niagara born and bred, which is you know a little point of pride to me because this is where I. And and you know what else? I mean, the the, the there's that whole you know, um, 97.7 and 102.1 uh, influence in the bands that they have today, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, Billy Bragg, I mean, if he could only get played on a 102.1 at the time. Uh, but I mean, and to this day, he's still quite a social activist and, um, you know, yep. doing his yep. thing. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, it's, it was great to be part of that, part of that time. I don't, I, I don't know if there's that much going on um, here now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really hope there is. I, I hope it's a lot more uh, organic uh, and, and, you know, instrumental based rather than guys sitting around like a land party with their trading their EDM loops or whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, <sighs> And that's actually, I, I, I know I, that's I exactly what I, I, no, I know it's cool though, because I, I mean, that's, that's actually one of the reasons why, um, you know, why I, I, the uh, Space Basement SB5 is, is, is kind of continued on is there's a bunch of us that, you know, like I, I can do track by track and whatever. And I said this to Jacob John, I mean, I've had, I've had 25 years to do an album I haven't, you know, other than the album that Frank and I did, you know, I, I'm not about to start, you know, so I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's get together with my friends, pick up, pick up my electric guitar, maybe play around with my, uh, play around with the synth and, or the patches that I have. But, but even though I'm using, you know, most of the guys, we, we, we are at the point now where we're doing stuff with our iPhones or our Android phones and playing with, you know, toys, music crack as uh, one, my one friend Dave Rugrock calls it. Um, He's right. But, but we're performing it live. Like, yeah, sure. Plug your phone into the border. We'll run it through the PA and play around. You know, kind of the, the stuff that, um, you know, uh, kind of the same stuff that Sergio and Osama were doing with uh, Jacob John not so far, right. not so long ago. Same idea, right? Um, we're trying to get back to that spirit where, and, you know, that's what I was telling about the other day where, um, where rather than, rather than try and curate it and, and turn it into something it isn't. I'm just hitting record. And then I mix it like I mix it as if it's a live show when I actually mix it down. And then I throw it on archive. Exactly the same thing that Jacob John was doing. The only innovation at all is that I'm doing it track by track so that people aren't lost in the mix. Because the one thing we used to have the problem with using the four track uh, Zoom was if you weren't near either the uh, y, X, Y mic or the two auxiliary room mics, you would get lost in the mix, literally. And there was no way of fixing it because all, all that we could do was master it. We couldn't actually mix it. Well, so. yeah, and that's the wonderful thing that's happened since, uh, uh, you know, the, the BMT Collective and Speechless and all of that was happening. Now the cost of entry for the technology is so, so low. Anybody yeah. can have it. I mean, you, you can run more than a 24 track recording studio on a laptop these days and yep. i mean when i first started buying pro tools a, a full pro tools rig was yeah like full pro uh, tools hd it, with their solution for the interface yeah, yeah. i mean it, you everything was proprietary and locked yep. down and it would be you know you're looking at five thousand here and ten thousand there and then you've got to buy the computer and load it up with extra ram that was uh, probably i don't know a couple hundred bucks a gig or whatever yep. and and now you know you can buy machines that far surpass all of that for a tenth of the price. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's amazing, and 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 from the from the the, the fact that like SSL really we was talking shop for a moment there. SSL released their first handheld interface. They've got a they've got a little four track um, four track digital interface that has an that has a four thousand button on. I think. That, that you push it on there and it'll emulate the color of the real board. 
like yeah. ridiculous and it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like 300 us it's not expensive i yeah well you know peter gabriel needs his money too i think he still owns ssl <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was one of the, uh, uh, anyway but that, that, yeah. cynicism aside it's amazing <laughs> what you can it's amazing what you can buy these yeah. days compared to you know 15 20 years ago when, when we were starting out and right. i I mean, it, God only knows what's going to be in 15 or 20 years from now as we're... As, yeah, as it's come a long way from this. <laughs> oh, no kidding, man. I, I, yep. mean, I think I did my very first demo to get into college on one of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, demagnetize the heads and, you know, denatured alcohol and all of that stuff. Yep. yep. Uh, but now who cares? As long as you've got a fast enough and large enough hard drive, yep. go to town. And fast yeah, enough exactly. internet connection. Yeah, well, that's the other aspect of it, of it as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah it's you, pretty exciting. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, <laughs> this is what I'm seeing right now. It's, it's interesting. I was saying this to, the other night when we had our phone call. Mm -hmm. uh, for the viewers that watching at home, uh, <laughs> Matt and I had a little bit of a preliminary discussion before this uh, before this uh, recording here um, about what we would talk about and. Uh, uh, I, I, I mentioned to him that I've got some friends who are, uh, you know, once again, peers mm -hmm. my age, uh, who are due to the COVID lockdown and lack of work and economic conditions are getting back into music. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so a guy has an electronic, Dave has an electronic drum kit, mm -hmm. John and Jeff have guitars and Jeff has gone into the amplifier world uh, mm -hmm. Frankie is all over the place with his instruments and he's like yeah let's make a record I'm like oh mm -hmm. boy here we go again <laughs> because when I first when I first started doing this and then it's uh, gonna be the I know a guy because <laughs> well, that's yeah, the other that's, thing actually and a side note side note anyone can get into this anyone with a laptop I mean Billy Eilish is a perfect example most recently but there have been others, but at the end of the day, you still need ears and you still need sound engineers and producers because is, I mean, I'm a schmuck in my basement and I can make something not, not sound horrible, but this is, you know, I, I am amazed at what can be done with a professional and a, a mix of hybrid equipment of, of traditional and digital equipment. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a whole different perspective. Yeah. You do, people do need that perspective. Uh, yep guys like me who've been mixing for 25 30 years let's not yeah. count uh, yeah you've got offer. that you've got that 40,000 hours on your ears never mind 10 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah 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 for, for a variety of reasons 40,000 hours <laughs> of high volume and yeah yep. <laughs> um, yeah but but still you know you, you make a living you just need somebody to pointing you in the right direction of uh, what tools to use and how to how to manipulate them to pull yep. it all together to uh, to realize an artistic uh vision or statement or or, or both yep. um and uh yeah it, 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 you know, it, when i was teaching college I had one of the last semesters, I had a, a kid walk in and, and uh, sit down and at, at the first day of the semester is like, okay, tell me what you, tell me who you are, tell me what you want. And I had one guy sit down and say, I want to know what I need to know to get a job. And that's mm -hmm. it, bar none. Teach me what I need to know to get a job. And I just looked at him mm -hmm. and I didn't, and I didn't want to let the air out of his tires on day one of the term. Sure. <laughs> but I basically said, what you need to know is there are never any jobs, but there's always plenty of work. So you need to learn how to mix. Mm -hmm. And if you can, if you can mix and make a name for yourself or develop a reputation for yourself as someone who can mix anything, anywhere, on anything, and not mm -hmm. be specific to software or hardware, yeah, sure, you're allowed to have your your preferences. But if you can't mm -hmm. make a mix happen, you're you're not worthy of calling yourself an engineer. Mm -hmm. Whether it, whether it be on uh, uh, you know that old realistic <laughs> <laughs> mixer that you showed me and using you know relying on your microphone technique to capture, or uh, uh, you know a uh, hundred thousand dollar Pro Tools rig like I happen to own. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know it, it doesn't really matter what you're using. What matters is the end result and. Yeah. 
from an engineering point of view, uh, from a production point of view, from a jam point of view, from a musician's point of view, just go and create. Leave it to guys like me mm -hmm. to capture it and pull it all together. And if we're not quite getting it, pull us aside and give us some insight. Mm -hmm. And then we'll find, you know, get the penny to drop. Put the penny in the slot and the penny will drop and all of a sudden the world will open up. And mm -hmm. magic, you're making the magic. Our job is to capture that magic that you're making point us in the right direction, drop the penny in our little slot uh, for our, in our headspace, and we'll, we'll do our best and, and probably even surprise you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the hugest part of it right now is um, understand, like, one thing that hasn't changed is that it's communication. Everything's about communication. And if you're able to communicate what your vision is, or the producer is in the case of music, then that communication can happen. I mean, there's nothing worse than being unhappy with something that's happened because you didn't talk about it, you know? Well, yeah, if you couldn't explain it, if you didn't have the words, if the person, the words you were using uh, with the person, if the, if the person you were using the words on didn't understand those words, mm -hmm. then, you know, you, you can't make, you can't realize that vision. Yeah. Yeah, um, it'll be much more difficult for you and much more frustrating, and it shouldn't be. This should be a joyous thing, the creation of music. Yeah, for sure. For because sure. because it all starts. It all starts with a bunch of people getting together with a bunch of instruments, mm -hmm. and uh, and and making that joyful noise. Yeah. As a, as a, making making a musical noise um, in a space together, uh, just as as. Uh, a way of expressing something they don't get a chance to in their normal day-to-day -day life. Right, right. You know, you're, you're worshiping at the church of creation and self-expression, and if you can't communicate uh, effectively with the people you're doing that with or the people who are, you're, you're uh, relying on to capture it and, and uh, convey it across the, 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 the interweb, the, the, through the ether, um, <laughs> then, yeah, then you're going to run into a lot of problems. Yeah. And that's stuff where you, or you're, or you're not going to have a very easy time of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, something I'm, I'm quite proud of is we, we did 200 nights of Ear of the Rat that, that were recorded. The last uh, 50 or so of them were actually made into videos online that are some nights it's unwatchable. Other nights it's like, wow, that's really amazing. Um, but, the, but it's a body of work. And one of the things that I was actually talking with my friend Merv, who's, who's one of the members of the uh, current SB5 situation, um, about us getting back initially into our friend Dan's backyard um, in, the, in the coming weeks, uh, probably just uh, five of us to, unless the curfew gets extended, um, because um, I'm, I'm making music here. I'm not sending some sort of message. Um, you know, which is something else. I mean, I, I, I applaud those that are, that are uh, um, uh, fighting against oppression. And I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I don't want this to be political. But, uh, right. but yeah, we're, so, yeah, so we're looking at getting together on a Saturday and we're just going to probably pull out the Zoom uh, H4N and just put, set it on the coffee table and just play. Like set it on the yeah. patio table and just play. Uh, awesome. I'm going to bring my acoustic guitar. We're going to make some music. And uh, yeah have a jam, probably have a fire. And uh, that's what, that's what I'm looking forward to is getting back into that. We, you know, we were only doing it every two weeks cause we're all a little bit older. I mean, we're not in our thirties anymore. <laughs> we're in our forties. Uh, so and, we're doing it every couple are, weeks. There are families involved and, and responsibilities there. Yeah. And it's not an excuse for me to go out on Friday nights and get drunk at Jacob's basement anymore. So <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah. you know, my focus has changed. Yeah. Um, not being that guy anymore. So uh, yeah, every every two weeks we're, we're we're looking at starting it up again. We had a really good run at the beginning of the year after a after a year hiatus, and uh, it's been a uh, it's been really good so far. And I'm just hoping to get back in there and and get the folks back out. And uh, awesome. like I mentioned, I'm looking forward to having a chat with Chandra uh, next couple of weeks, and that'll be that'll be coming up sometime on this channel here next as well, I guess. Yeah, uh, right on. Yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, yeah, um, we talked about Speechless, we talked about um, Billy Mason and 
and the start of this particular jam and how it's kind of continued on for 20 years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, we'll and about us getting on. old and getting yeah. gray in our beards. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's zoom out the camera a little bit so you can't <laughs> see mine so well. Um, yeah, I, uh, 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 yeah, if only my arms were long enough. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is always is going on, and I, I, I tried to tell this story just a few minutes ago. Yeah, um, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing my peers uh, once again. Um, get into the musicality just as you know I, I not so long ago my 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 uncle and and his peers were you know at, at about the same age that we're at now we're basically doing that and they turned into a little bit of a local phenomenon playing all the town events mm -hmm. uh and i you know again they i got the phone call as the sound guy uh yep. because i had the recording rig they could move into the barn that they were recording at um and and here it is repeating itself all over again and i'm hearkening back to you know the memories of my 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 uncle slash godfather mm -hmm. uh, uh his neighbors and and besties friends uh doing exactly that and you know making a little i think it was a three or five song demo that you know what my mother has on her phone nice just, just so she can hear the sound of her brother singing uh, at any time yeah yeah that's great um uh so you know that that's that you never know what where your creation is going to end up and what kind of joy or uh, memories uh you'll inspire people by doing something like an open jam or getting together like you are or we did back in the day mm -hmm. um and and it's just go do it you've got nothing this is what life is all about as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. exchanging communicating at that really really intimate level yeah um and and exposing yourself to people that you probably aren't that intimately involved with mm -hmm. uh, and letting them see inside your, your heart, your brain, your soul, your, your fingers, your, your whatever it is you play. Yeah. That let's, musical let's, connection that happens, whether it's improvising within a, within a song, an original or a cover or, or whether just straight out improvising, whether it's jazz or whatever it is that we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, absolutely, man. It, it, it's, it, uh, I mean, I, People ask me if I miss playing. I used to play. I started as a musician in junior high in grade, mm -hmm. I think it was grade seven. Uh, I, I was a trumpet player, and that's what got me into the university I went to school for. Uh, that's what got me in the door there. Um, and then I changed over and changed over to the engineering and production side of things. Um, and, and I really haven't looked back, and people ask me, do I miss it? Well, yes and no, but the memories that I have, the the, the 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 warmest and fuzziest of memories that I have, um, are enough. Mm -hmm. um, would I pick up a horn again tomorrow? Well, you know, if the if there was a if I was feeling it and the reason was good enough, if the communication, you know, if I felt like I had something to add to the communication, sure, I would dig my horn out in a second. Yeah, but but at, uh, as it is, you're capturing the moment when you're doing what you do whether it's music yeah. or whether it's it, it's production of voiceover through television and all the other stuff yeah or, sa or, or sound design for sound a television design. yeah exactly yeah. uh or corporate video or sound effect or whatever yeah this is this is uh this is my contribution to the, the communicative world mm -hmm. um and and yeah i i do not regret putting my horn down and putting it in the closet i still you take it out every now and again just to make sure the valves still work and it can blow through it. Nothing's crawled in there. Uh, but yeah, I, I, playing for fun, uh, not my, hasn't been my thing for quite some time. I've, I've evolved into communicating in other ways. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, life. Everybody should communicate, evolve yep. their style of communication over time. Yeah, I'm sure. If, I'm sure if the if the usual suspects from back in the day at, at uh, Two Bond Street were to get together and and uh, jam uh, <laughs> in one place at one time, the the result would be similar but different. Yeah, <laughs> much different than, than yeah. It, had it, it would be in informed past. by the it would be informed by the 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 history shared and otherwise that we have, and right. it would probably have a. Yeah, it, I think it would. It'd be really interesting, I'm sure.
have to talk. I know Jacob John's not at the, at the moment. Jacob John's kind of in the, he's taking a break for music as well, where he's like, uh, just, you know, he's, he talks about it in the video that we had, uh, that I had with him where he's just, you know, and, and he's focusing on his kids right now, which is great because his kids are still young and he's, yeah. you know, he's a little bit behind us. So he's kind of doing that thing right now. And it's uh, pretty well, exciting. Brave man to start a family at his age. But, I know. Uh, <laughs> good, good, good for him. I, I, that horse uh, left the barn before I got yep. inclined to do so. Um, <laughs> but yeah, good, good for him for doing that. And uh, yep. I've only met his one daughter. I'm sure his second one is uh, just as beautiful as the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's, they're going to turn into very interesting individuals, oh, given, yeah. given, given their father. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And hopefully they hold up the family tradition of making music. Oh, making I'm sure music. they will. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure the musical uh, instruments will be out at some point. Making a noise in this world. Let's let's hope that he uh, imparts that upon them. That's awesome. Thanks so much for doing this. This was great, Greg. My pleasure. My pleasure, Matt. Hopefully uh, we'll see each other in person. Yeah, for sure. For sure.